Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. As always, I am your host, Simon. Welcome to the show. I was here. One of my writers read me a script. I'm going to react to it. Uh, that's the format of the show. That's what we do here. It's written by Dave. And the title is... Bloody teleprompter. Scroll! Uh, more ridiculous safety warnings. Um, the first one must have done well. <laughs> Let's jump in. Although when we reuse the script idea... David I say beige. Simon often claims it's his fault because he's creatively bankrupt. I feel that on this occasion I must take at least some of the responsibility. While scrolling through my massive collection of various research documents, which, like most of my scripts, are arranged in no particular order. Ah, yes. The old filing system of no particular order. This is March. <laughs> to, uh, Boobly Boo. This is Misk. And, and, and the rest are, uh, other. I have just like a cupboard in my house, which is like, you know, when you get something important, you're like, oh yeah, warranty for like a f dishwasher or something. And I'm just like, my filing system is throw it in a box and hopefully never require it. And then something will break and I'll be like, am I going to go through the box and find the warranty documents or am I just going to pay for the repair? Almost always end up paying for the repair. So honestly, I don't know why I keep any of the paperwork. Anyone else? Just me? <laughs> My dad's someone, and he's like, Well, every time I get something like that, son, I scan it into my computer, and then I shred the original document, and then I file it away in, like, file sorting program X or whatever. I don't know what he uses. But he's, like, the most organized. Like, you could be like, Dad, Dad, I need the, uh, the warranty card for the dishwasher that you purchased in 1986. And he'll be like, No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Give me 30 seconds. I got it right here. So, like, okay. Anyway, I came across a document containing several entries that never made it into the last script about ridiculous safety warnings. Well done, Dave. You're really selling it. You're really selling it. So this is the episode uh, which uh, has all the ones that weren't quite good enough for the last one. So you might as well just stop watching here, viewer. Jesus. <laughs> I did check this with Simon, and then I just received the response, let's go. <laughs> okay, so I guess I approved it. I was like, yeah, 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 sure, that sounds like a banging idea. Using all the slightly less banging ideas from last time. Let's go! And without further delay, I present to you our avid watchers, in no particular order, some of the most worst for the safety of the You can't even speak. Yes, I can! Be careful with your curling iron. Now, this is not actually one of the ones from my previous research. Well, that introduction was wholly useless then, wasn't it, Dave? But it came up so frequently in the comment section that I had to check this out. One of these comments, written by YouTuber Fat Squatch PMW, well done on that name, made the following claim back in the early 90s. The warning on my younger sister's new hair, hair, hair curling wand. <laughs> That's not a real thing, is it? Whatever you want to call it, still haunts me to this day. For external use only. No, they didn't. <laughs> Jesus, like, why is that? Why is that? It went on to say not to be inserted into any bodily orifice. Who the fuck is inserting a curling iron? Like, I know what that is. Like, it's that thing that's, like, long and hot. No one's putting, no one's putting that in their butt or their... Lady parts. Now, after reading through pages and pages of different safety warnings, even struggling to believe that such a warning would be included on such a product, I was wrong. I, <laughs> I thought this would just be like an urban legend. I found two products, one on Amazon and one on the Curry's website. Curry's, somehow still in business. It's like, Curry's, I feel, do you have Best Buy? Is like Best Buy the equivalent of Curry's in America? Is Best Buy still around? We had Best Buy in the UK for a while and then they closed up shop. But Curry's is like, it's just Amazon, but you have to can go to the store and pay more. <laughs> I don't know if it's more expensive. It's probably not because they're desperately trying to stay in business. Or maybe Curry's is a thriving business. I'm sorry, Curry's. I love you. Uh, I, I, I'd go in and look at the products and then buy them on Amazon, both of which carried variations on this warning. If we can assume that in order for a safety warning to be included with a product, somebody must have attempted to carry out the action that is warned against, then I would love to have been on a fly on the wall during that particular visit to the accidents or emergency department. <laughs> You'd be like, unplug it! Unplug it, it's burning my insides! Interestingly, after mentioning the existence of this warning to a nurse friend of mine, she told me that although she'd not heard of this happening, she was not at all surprised that it had. Yeah. I. Th th there must, like, the, the stories that emergency room or A&E workers, we call emergency room accidents and emergency in the UK. Strangely, the, the TV show ER was not translated to A&E. 
so everyone knows what ER means. But um, what am I talking about? Yeah, they must. Like, there's some crazy shit that goes down. The shit people pop up their bottoms must be mad. Apparently, the number of people who have turned up at the hospital having a slipped and fallen onto something is truly astonishing. You'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, just sat down on this uh, hot curling iron, just naked, while it was pointing upwards, and it just slipped into my bottom. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure stuff just doesn't slip into a bottom. I fell on it. I fell on it? I fell on it. I was bored. What does it? I don't know. I don't have much experience, like, sliding things into my ass. What is going on? Why am I talking about this? You have a poison in your mind, and the fact that you can't see it makes me so sad. She then went on to tell me how a lady in her 20s had once come in with absolutely no idea how she could have possibly got a small hairbrush lodged in one of her orifices. It's a, I mean, they must... It's like, it's just saving embarrassment, right? It's like, yeah, I don't know how it happens. It's like, they know, you know. <laughs> but we still don't want to say it. It's like fell on it and they're like sure you did mate and you're like sure i did doc i a a just trust your fuel gauge i'm sure everybody does this you take your jet ski down to the beach at midnight in order to engage in some thrilling recreational sports but upon arrival you can't remember whether or not you filled the tank with petrol but <laughs> Just look at the cage. But this is not a problem at all. Ever the prepared boy scout, you happen to have a box of matches in your pocket, and so you strike one of those matches to provide enough light to look into the tank. <laughs> what are you doing, you mad lad? Well, isn't that what anybody would do? Hopefully the majority of people out there are not that stupid. Also, what the how do you look into a tank? I don't know what is in you like when you're filling up your car with petrol or gas. What? What? I don't... I literally... If someone was like, where does that petrol go, Simon? Point to the rough area where that petrol goes in your car. I'd have no idea. I'm just like, it goes into the magic hole and then to the engine somehow. You're like, I don't know where the fuel tank is. Literally no idea. I'd assume it's like under the car somewhere, like maybe in the middle for like weight distribution. Because like, like 70 kilos or something goes in there. I fill up my car and you know how much weight's in there. Because like what? One, one liter of petrol runs weighs roughly one kilogram. What? You know, that's a, you fill it up and you're like, Jesus Christ, it's just like money, 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 money. And you're like, okay, it's a lot of weight. So I assume it's in the center somewhere, hopefully. But like holding a torch, a, a match up to there, even a torch and looking inside and be like, you're just going to see a pipe going to like wherever the fuel tank is. Hopefully the majority of people out there are not that stupid. But according to UL Consumer Safety Director John Drengenberg, quote, it's happened where people have said, I can't see in the tank and see how much fuel there is. And the only thing they have is a lighter. Wait, this has happened more than one time. But it's weird that it happened twice, right? Fortunately for all the idiots out there, a company called Underwriters Laboratory an independent organization that sets safety standards for just about every household appliance has got you covered. In the manual of almost every product that contains a petrol tank, you will find a warning that specifically tells you not to use a naked flame in visually assessing your fuel levels. I have to say, this does sound insane, right? You're like, only someone with an IQ of about 16 would do this. But then again, you'll be in the moment and you'll be like, well, I need to see and I have this and you're like, oh, this is a terrible idea. But it's like, I'm not dim. I'm like, just, I'm, I'm just not dim. But I could see myself doing something like that because I'm also kind of an idiot at the same time. Like, you know what I mean? Personally, I think that such warnings should not be included. Not only would it help to alleviate the planet of overcrowding issues, it would give us many more entries for the next Darwin Awards video. Careful, Dave, sounds like you're for eugenics. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We should definitely not include the warning because those people need to be removed from the gene pool because you've just, oh God. In a stunning turn of events, a superhero is being sued. Medication warnings. Out of all the safety warnings out there, the ones contained within the information leaflets that come with medication should really be the ones that you pay most attention to. I've told this story before. Whenever I'm in America, you just sit down, you know, watch some American TV, and they're like, this pill relieves this. And you're like, ooh, okay, weird, I'm getting advertised medicine. And then it's like, and side effects include blah, 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 blah. May cause artificial insemination. And death. And you're like, holy shit, why are you telling me all this? And obviously it's some legally mandated thing. But it is like, all drugs, you'd just be like taking a, I don't know, an ibuprofen or paracetamol or something. You're like, mm, mm, mild headache. And then you look at the side effects, it's like, might induce stroke, death, disease. May cause anal leakage. And you're like, 
fucking hell. <laughs> but none of, it's because it once happened one time. Sadly, given the ridiculousness of some of these warnings, it is highly likely that people may not even bother to read them at all. I found many examples of these, but in the interest of keeping the video flowing, I've decided to only include three. Dime Tap for Children It's described as the pharmacist recommended brands for children's cough and cold combination to relieve a runny nose, congestion, cough, and more. The medication is specifically targeted at children between the ages of 6 to 12. So, you have to wonder why exactly the product manufacturers thought it would be necessary to include a warning against driving or operating heavy machinery while under the influence of the drug. While not exactly a medical impossibility, the warning that children should not use it while pregnant or breastfeeding seems to be a little unnecessary as well. <laughs> That's more funny for some reason. The first one. I mean, I get why they include these, because some like adult might be like, well, I like the taste of it, and I don't like taking pills because I'm a baby. And it's like, okay, well, fine, include it. Two, extends male in heart. Isn't... Oh, extends, extends. I was like, extends, isn't that? That's a really weird movie. There's a really, really brain twisty movie called extends. It's got that capital Z like this. Sam, show it on the screen. No. Ta -da. Um, it's a male enhancement bill called Extends. <laughs> Extends your cock! Do I say, what are you doing with a pump? Here, take two of these. This FDA-approved drug, which is definitely probably not a scam. Wait, is it really FDA-approved? Really? According to its manufacturer, is a safer alternative to drugs like Viagra. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I... Existen sounds like the sort of pill that you see for sale on some, like... You know, some naughty website. Or like in a dodgy gas station somewhere and you're like, really? And it's like, safer than Viagra. What, you mean the pill that is prescribed <laughs> and has been through like decades of testing and millions, possibly billions of use cases. Safer than that one, you mean? The one you buy at the petrol station. <laughs> or from the internet for a dodgy site with <laughs> shown a giant cock. According to their website, enjoying a better satisfying... Oh, I just pressed the wrong button on my teleprompter foot pedal and it took it all the way back to the start. Oh, well. Although when we rose, when we reuse script ideas, Simon often claims that it's his fault because he's creatively... No, I'm joking. I'll, I'll go back. I'll find it, for God's sake. Wow, I actually scrolled the thing to exactly where it was supposed to be. It's basically a miracle. Uh, so the website says, Enjoying a better satisfying sex life in a much larger penis is now attainable and not impossible at all anymore. Holy shit, what is that wording? Also, I don't like... Viagra just is like... Mm, it's not for like making your cock huge. Right? It's just to make you like... In case you can't... You get my meaning. <laughs> describing this in the most British way possible. It makes you, uh, if you can't, you know, because of, and... <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know. Although this particular piece of fantastically written advertising has probably got you sold already, I'm afraid there's some bad news. According to the figurative ream of warnings that come packaged with this drug, you must not take it if you're pregnant or nursing. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, for all the ladies out there who want that giant penis. And I mean, that's a thing, but it's like, if you're nursing, it's that's. I don't know. Like, I know men can produce breast milk. So, if you are a man who has transitioned to being a woman and has taken the pills to. Can you then. with the baby? In which case, and I mean, if you've still got your. then maybe you want. <laughs> you follow my drift? If you know what I mean. Well, I'm fairly certain that there are many women out there who wish that they had a bigger cock in their lives. I'm not convinced that any of them legitimately believe that taking this drug is going to fix that problem. <laughs> they take the drug and it's like, why is my husband's penis still so tiny? I've been taking this drug for years! <laughs> you both, both of those people need to be taken out of the gene pool because dumb, small penis. <laughs> Not that having a small penis is a reason to be taken out of the gene pool. It's just a joke! If there are, and they happen to be pregnant, then there are much bigger issues that need to be dealt with. Number three, this particular one is so common among those who report ridiculous safety warnings that it doesn't require much video time, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Almost every sleeping medication that I looked up online will have specific warnings that taking the tablets will cause, cause drowsiness. <laughs> It's like, it's weird, I took an Ambien just before I need to go on a really long drive at a terrible car accident. <laughs> Why'd you take an Ambien? Oh, I can never sleep right. <laughs> what the f 
Who needs this? In fact, that's not entirely true. It appears that these drug manufacturers who have specifically developed a drug to help you go to sleep don't even have that much faith in their product. The warning actually reads, Caution may cause drowsiness. May. 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 You need more powerful drugs then. Poorly worded warnings. The following entry is slightly different. It does not cover it, but it would be a bit disappointing if it was exactly the same, Dave. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, we're just going to cover the drug ones again. It does not cover a particular warning. Rather, it addresses the ambiguity that can arise from poorly worded warnings. While I'm very aware that these warnings rarely lead to the product being misused, I am at heart a linguistic pedant, something that is particularly difficult to fully pursue when using, using speech recognition software that frequently mixes up two, two, and two, all there and there. Well, that worked out brilliantly in the audio form, didn't it? It. Nevertheless, one would think that product manufacturers would work a little harder to ensure that these warnings are as clear as possible. While it has unfortunately become acceptable to say things like, I got this for free, the phrase that particularly irritates me. I definitely say that. What's wrong with that? I got this for free. What's wrong with that? I'd be like, yeah, I got this for free. Uh, I don't know. Like, I got the, this Raycon sitting on my desk. I got these for free. God, it'd be convenient if they were the sponsor of today's video, wouldn't it? I got this for free. What's wrong with that? That sounds fine. A phrase that particularly irritates me. How much free did you have to hand over during the exchange? Oh, I got this for free. Oh, I see. Dave, that is pedantic, my man. Warnings that tell people who have purchased laundry capsules that they must now need to make sure to keep children... Oh, I reset the teleprompter again! <laughs> I never do this. All performance issues, you know, it's not uncommon. One out of five. This happens like once a week and it's happened twice in the same script. <laughs> Warnings that tell people who have purchased laundry capsules that they must now make sure to keep away from children seem to be going too far. I mean, how dangerous can someone who buys laundry pods actually be? Oh, Dave, that is so pedantic. Everyone knows what they mean, Dave. Statistically, you must have a field day with my emails because I don't think about grammar. I don't think, I'm just like, is the meaning across? Yes. Send. Don't think about it. Don't think about it at all. Dave must be like... I'll stop. Let's carry on. Other manufacturers seriously suggesting they should never go near children again after making their unwise purchase. You're probably thinking, come on, Dave. Nobody's stupid enough to misunderstand that message. Please. Please. Allow me to disabuse you of this comforting notion. A young man who was working for me one summer in the pub during his university break, a man who, he, he was at university? He got into university? Which university did he go to? University of dumb people? But a bum bum psh! Went on to hold quite an important position in government. He once came back from the cellar after being dispatched to change a barrel and asked me the following question. Do I really have to take off my hat before I change the Carlsberg? What? I don't get it. Being a busy Saturday night, I'm afraid I've always been a little short with him before, perhaps saying something along the lines of, of course not, you f***ing idiot. After a few months of silence, he said, but on the barrel, it says, remove cap before attach. Oh, that's so, it's not even funny, it's just depressing. <laughs> I was forced to patiently explain in front of a pub full of people that the message was in fact referring to the plastic dust cap that covers the attachment point. Apart from very firmly falling into the category labelled things that I will not put on my CV, this story proves that there are people out there who really do go through life blindly following instructions to the letter. Well, it sounds like he's going to be a perfect fitting government, to be honest, Dave, doesn't he? In today's ever-increasing culture of suing everybody else for your own stupidity, manufacturers would do well to clear up these confusing messages. In the case of the aforementioned barman, I'm not sure that this would be much help. On his second day working for me, he asked, How do you get the bottles onto the optics without everything pouring out? What are the optics? There's all this pub lingo that I just don't know. A disturbing turn of events for anybody who may have still had faith in the government of the United Kingdom. I don't get it. Children's scooters move. Oh, they do, do they? <laughs> this is a very disappointing if I arrive. It's just like, oh, they wheels purchased separately. There, this is another example of a safety warning that I left out in my previous episode simply because I didn't believe how it could possibly be real. However, during the intervening time, I've had personal experience with this particular warning. Several months ago, I bought my five-year-old boy one of these collapsible scooter things. Although I think that the devices are pretty self-explanatory, it came with the usual hefty booklet of instructions and safety warnings. Having learned that the best course of action would to take with such things is to throw them in the bin, 
I can't tell you exactly what these safety warnings included, but from previous experience, I assume that they include such messages as being careful not to amputate your fingers with the folding mechanism and stuff like that. In London, some dude chopped off my fingers and threw them up on stage. Murder face rolled them up and smoked them. Murder face! I have to say, sometimes I do read the safety warnings. I recently brought, bought a leaf blower and it had this like big grinding thing on the bottom because it also sucks in leaves grinds them up and puts them in a bag and i was like this thing seems fairly dangerous like 3000 watts or something and i'm like just because this seems dangerous and it's probably got places i could put my fingers where i shouldn't i'm gonna have a quick gander over the safety instructions and then some useful sh like don't hold it like this unless you want your fingers to go into the spinning contraption like never take this off and i'm like okay go 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 cool Cuckoo, cuckoo, cool. Safety first. There is one safety warning that I can tell you about, and that is because it is engraved into the handlebars of the scooter. If I remember, I'll include a photograph of Sam to add to the video. If he did that, it's included here. If he didn't, it isn't. <laughs> the warning reads Caution, scooter moves during use. Is this really. I just. I just. Who is that for? Who is that for? I mean, it's for lawyers, right? Because no one else is that dumb. Although I understand that these appear to be some sort of mission to infantilize children to the point that they no longer understand anything about the world, it is perhaps worth mentioning that after my son read this message, he said in a tone of bafflement that I have not heard him use since I showed him an old CRT television that we had in the loft. Isn't that the point? This simple application of common sense from my five-year-old child is one of the proudest dad moments of my life. Perhaps, just perhaps, there is hope for the younger generation. Usually, if you apply a certain standard of logic, you can come up with a plausible reason as to why a safety message may be included, no matter how moronic it might appear. I must confess, on this occasion, I have been unable to do so. It's just some, it's gotta be some stupid legal thing, for sure. Even the most obtuse Floridian must be aware that scooters are designed to move. Guns can be dangerous. <laughs> Can they? I am aware that talking about issues of gun safety can be somewhat contentious. However, I don't believe that it is unfair to say that in the wrong hands, guns have the potential to be dangerous. I would say so. I'd say that guns can potentially be dangerous. They have the potential for danger. Even gun manufacturers agree with me. Contained in the various instruction manuals for handguns and shotguns that I read online, I found the following gems. Never discharge this weapon in the direction of anybody that you do not wish to injure. <laughs> do not operate while under the influence of alcohol. And perhaps my personal favorite, misuse of this product can result in death. I'd go one step further. Like, I've shot a lot of guns. And one of the like basics, most basic things of gun safety is never point a gun at anybody. Like anybody, even if it's unloaded. And anybody, just don't do it. And if someone points a gun at me, I've been on a range a couple of times, someone will be like, hey, and I'll be like, bro, no. And they'll be like, what, I haven't loaded it yet. And I'll be like, bro, no. <laughs> don't point that shit at me. And perhaps my personal favorite, misuse of this product can result in death or maybe correct use, depending on what your goal was. Although these safety warnings have been scorned for stating the obvious, it gets to a whole no to a whole nother level, it gets better. According to the Giffords Law Center to prevent gun violence, 54% of deaths in New York are suicide, and more than 27% of all suicide deaths in New York involve firearms. From 2013 to 2017, 2,283 people died in New York in gun-related suicides, one every 19 hours. In addition, from 2007 to 2016, 180 women were killed by a gun by their intimate partner in New York. Nearly 37% of New York's intimate partner homicides involve a gun. So, what do the legislators of Westchester, New York, think would be the best way to lower the statistics? Sensible debate about reasonable gun reforms? Well, no. After a unanimous vote, they decided that the best way to combat this problem was with the stringent application of safety warnings. Yeah, but these people aren't misusing the guns. They're using the guns the way they intended. The killing! According to WestchesterLegislators.com, which sounds like the most fascinating website ever made, quote, the labels would warn that access to a firearm in the home significantly increases the risk of suicide, homicide, and death during domestic disputes, as well as the risk of accidental deaths of children or others. Everybody knows this! It also includes contact information for the county's crisis prevention and response team and the national suicide hotline. I think that's great, though. I think that's great, having that number on there, because that's actually useful. Warning people that guns hurt people is not. Having the suicide prevention number in there I think is fantastic. Besides being displayed at retailers, the warning would also be given to people seeking gun license in Westchester. I know Dave's making fun of this, but I think that's actually really good. 
that they're handing out that information at the same time as handing out a gun. And obviously, that's very easy to do. It'd be like, cool, we'll just add this to people getting guns. Easy. Legislation done. Gun reform is f***ing complicated. In other related news, you're much more likely to be killed in a car accident if you're inside a car. You can greatly reduce your likelihood of not being eaten by a shark by not going in the sea. Well, you can be killed by a car as a pedestrian. As one Texas shooting range owner told me, safety warnings like this make little to no difference. Any responsible gun owner will already be aware of this sort of thing. Besides, information like this is the equivalent of the old iTunes terms and conditions. You might scroll through it to get to the bottom, but you certainly ain't gonna read it. Buy two thermometers. Where will this go? The last entry from the very bottom of my previous list did not contain any notes, just the intriguing title, Buy two thermometers, and a link. When I clicked on the link, <laughs> I was immediately and horrifyingly reminded of the safety warning that the title referred to. And to be honest, I can't imagine why I didn't include it in the previous video. Oh, God. <laughs> the warning label is attached to the packaging of a medical thermometer and it reads, What's you? <laughs> no, it doesn't. This is a good. <laughs> Once used rectally, the thermometer should not be used orally. <laughs> That's a master mouth thermometer right there. Even during the most intense fever that I've ever experienced, incidentally brought about by a COVID-19 vaccination, I've never been in such a state of delirium that this message would be necessary. It's like, oh, my only option. <laughs> I think that about does it for this episode. It doesn't matter how sexually frustrated you might be, you should never, and I mean never, use your curling iron as a sex aid. Don't do it! And uh, that's where we end today's episode. Thank you for watching. Money, 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 money.